Good morning, Spellman. It's Friday, January 7th, 2022, day six. On today's show, Evie stops by for another Crystal Corner. Jamie Madison Reddick sits down with the new Dean of Students, Ms. Stephanie Irvin, and Isabella Gonzalez has your weekend weather forecast. I'm Jamie Madison Reddick. And I'm Michaela Fredericks. We're your pilots. And this, and this is, is your morning flight. Get ready to take flight. On today's segment of What's It All About, Deacon John tells us why the Mass of the Epiphany doesn't always fall on the 6th of January. Welcome, Deacon John. So I was looking at the calendar, and I noticed that the Epiphany doesn't always fall on the 6th of January. What's that all about? Okay, Natalie, they're, they're really not all over the place. You know that Christmas, you know, Epiphany, it's all part of the Christmas season. Yeah, Christmas isn't a day, it's an actual season. So when you talk about a Christmas calendar, yeah, we're talking an actual, actual calendar. You know, believe it or not, the Epiphany is actually the 12th night of Christmas. So between December 25th being the first, we get to January 6th, which is known as the 12th day or the 12th night of Christmas. Hey, 12 days of Christmas, 12 nights, all the same thing. That's because it's Catholic. That's because the, the song is actually Catholic because it was created after the Epiphany. Now the Epiphany are the three kings coming and giving their gifts and showing what? Showing the, the majesty and that Jesus is actually a king. And of course the Catholic Church, we have to do things a little bit different because we celebrate the Epiphany on the Sunday that falls between January 2nd and January 8th. And if the Sunday falls on January 6th, hey great, it's the perfect day, but if not, we kind of stick it in there because it works with the liturgical calendar because the next week after that is the baptism of Jesus. So that's why we put it, that's the way it is. But this Christmas season is really, really important, you know, because there's a lot of things that happen in these 12 days. Did you know on the 26th is the Feast of St. Stephen, who was one of the first deacons of the church? He's also called the proto-martyr because he was the first martyr, the first one ever martyred for saying that Jesus was our Lord and Savior. We also separate, celebrate on the 27th the feast of John the Evangelist. And then, of course, we all remember the story that, you know, what happens? Jesus is born, and Herod's all mad, and he's a little bit crazy anyway, so what does he do? He has the, what called a slaughter of the innocents, right? Or the killing of the, of the holy innocents. And he sends his soldiers to Bethlehem to kill all the male children under the age of three, right? And we know we get that from the Gospel of Matthew. So, these companions of Christ, the Holy Innocents, um, St. Stephen, they're very unique because they were the first to give up their lives for Christ. They're the first martyrs. And we know that John is very special because he's the written word or the logos of Jesus. The first line of the Gospel of St. John, the word became flesh, the logos became flesh. So these are very important to us. So this whole season of Christmas is really, really important. If you really want to know about those 12 days of Christmas, just by the way, as a little aside, you know, it says on the first day of Christmas, my true love, which is God, okay, gave to me. Why is it me? Because everyone who's been baptized gets a gift from God. And what are those gifts? Well, the first one, the partridge in a pear tree, is the Son of God actually coming to us. Because why? A parent partridge, when it's in a tree with its young, will sacrifice itself to a predator in order to save its young. I don't know if you knew that. We have two turtle doves, the Old and the New Testament. We got three French hens, faith, hope, and charity. We call those the hinge virtues, the theological virtues, because all the other virtues work on those virtues. We have four calling birds, but we have four gospels, right? And they call out. They call out what? The good news of Jesus. We have five gold rings. Those are the five books of the Pentateuch, the five books of the law. We have six geese a laying. We had six days of creation in Genesis before God took a rest. And we got seven swans of swimming. Well, we, those are the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit, which are reinforced by the seven sacraments of the church. We have eight maids of milking. Those are the eight beatitudes that Jesus gives us, the things we ought to do in our lives. And we have nine ladies dancing. Well, those are the nine fruits 
of the Holy Spirit we get. And then we have what? Ten lords are leaping. That was in the Ten Commandments, the things we ought not to do in our lives. And then we have 11 pipers piping, which are what? The 11 trustworthy apostles, because we know Judas betrayed Jesus. And we have 12 drums are drumming, which are the 12 points of the first real creed of the church, doctrine of the church, the Apostles' Creed. So there's a whole bunch of stuff here in this season of Christmas, not one day. So all these dates have a real big impact on us. Wow, thank you, Deacon John. I didn't know that. I'll be sure to mark it on my calendar next year. Thanks, Deacon John. Let's take a look at the news. As you can see, we're not in the studio this time. Just after our last broadcast, the administration decided to switch to remote learning due to the increase in COVID cases being recorded around the New York area. We have remained in remote since, but we will be back in the building Monday, January 10th. And remember, the best way to ensure we stay together as a school is to limit contact, wear your mask, and make sure you test if you are showing any symptoms. In other news, did you get to see the senior hallway before we left? Each year level got to decorate a portion of the school for the holidays, and thanks to senior Faye Hidalgo and her team, they transformed the senior hallway into a gingerbread house with all the trimmings. The sophomores had the challenge of turning the hallway on the third floor high side into Santa's workshop. Various toys were placed on top of the lockers. Cardinal Spelman High School extends a big congratulations to senior Stephanie Espinosa Perez, who is a nominee for the 2022 U.S. Presidential Scholars Program. State Education Commissioner Betty A. Rosa nominated 25 New York State high school seniors for the program. The recognition is one of the nation's highest honors for high school students. Stephanie is one of two students who were selected from the Bronx. Cardinal Spelman High School is the only private Catholic school on the nominations list. Recently, I got to sit down with Ms. Stephanie Irving, the new dean of students at Spelman. We spoke about what it's like stepping into these new shoes. Good morning, Spelman. It's Jamie Madison Reddick here with Ms. Irving, your dean of students. And today, we're here to ask her some questions. So, my first question, you're a graduate here at Spelman. What inspired you to come back and teach and coach? Well, for me, Spelman has always been a special place. This is, in fact, my high school, and it's more than just a high school to me. It was a second home. I have a lot of faculty members that are still a dear part of my life today. Mr. D. Palermo actually wrote my recommendation when I went to grad school. Ms. Palero, I still visit her every summer, and we'll sit down and have dinner together. Ms. Morris, I talk to her on a regular basis. Coming back wasn't so much of a hard decision because I was already coaching. So it was a matter of me quitting my day job and devoting more time to the students. And being that I was a teacher, now I can be in the building and influence students inside the building and outside on the field as well. That's so nice. So you've been a dean here for about two months. How are you adjusting? It's a process. It's still ongoing. Every day it's a new challenge. Every day is a new responsibility, a new learning technique. I'm getting by. I have a great support system. And I also believe that the students actually help me more than they understand. What do you hope to achieve here as dean? As dean, I would hope to help every graduate feel just as special as Cardinal Spellman feels to me. I would hope that they would honor and appreciate their time here and understand how impactful their four years are of high school. And it's a special time in their life, and I hope that they don't take it for granted and appreciate it once they move on to the next chapter. Are there any new things you learned here that you didn't know before? There's no pool on the fourth floor. <laughs> <laughs> um, are you still coaching the track team? And if you are, is it kind of hard to balance the two, being Dean and being the coach of the track team? I am still coaching the cross country team as well as the indoor and outdoor track team. It is intense. It is time consuming, but it, they are both two things that I am passionate about. So when you do something that you care about and that you value, it doesn't feel like work. It feels like you are enjoying every moment of life. How does it feel to be the new dean? I love it. I enjoy coming to work every day, and it does not feel as stressful as it appears. And my last and final question, can sophomores please get called third for lunch again? I plead the fifth. Well, you heard it here, folks. Thank you so much for stopping by the studio today. You're welcome. Have a great night. Evie Tong is back looking at the world of crystals with a new Crystal Corner. Hi, and welcome back to another episode of Crystal Corner, a segment where we talk about crystals and tell you information that you might or might not know. 
I'm Evie, and Tiffany would normally be here, but she's feeling sick at the moment, so I'm going to be doing this on my own. And during today's episode, we'll be talking about crystal cuts or different ways that crystals can be shaped and sold. Uh, I have some examples for me, and we're just going to tell you about them as we go. So, the first type of crystal that we're going to be talking about is going to be tumbled crystals or polished crystals, whatever you want to call them. They're usually a very broad term though because they come in different shapes, such as these two right over here. This one's obviously shaped differently. So this one is a tiger stone and then this one is a red jasper. As you can see, these stones are polished. They don't come in their natural form and it's pretty popular in general. You see a lot of museums, they have it just in a big bucket and it's just all polished pretty small and they're very common. They come in a lot of different shapes and some of them are even in the shapes of like hearts or dinosaurs and they're sold all over the place. It really is just a very basic general form that all crystals come in. But there are also other shapes that are a lot more precise such as this one which is a tower. This one as you can see is very sharp cuts. The shape is well basically what the name suggests a tower and this one is actually pretty popular in jewelry and even though i'm not wearing my crystal necklace right now they do sell a lot of these um the other types of crystals are crystals that are kind of shaped as other objects so for example this crystal on my necklace is a mushroom some of them can be dinosaurs and i've seen crystal bats too which is really nice and then the last crystal we're going to talk about today is going to be raw crystals which are personally my favorite type of crystals to have such as this one right over here it's the biggest and probably my favorite crystal in my collection so these come essentially in their natural form. Obviously, they're cut into smaller pieces so that they can be sold easier, but I think that bigger pieces are available for purchase, but they are pretty expensive. So with that being said, that's it for today's episode. I know it was kind of short, but it was just a quick little thing that we decided to do for this morning flight, and I hope you all have a wonderful day. I'm Evie, this is Crystal Corner, and we'll hopefully see you next time. Thanks, Evie. I'd like to welcome Isabella Gonzalez to our team full-time as she takes over the weather for me. It's been pretty cold out this week, Izzy. How's the weekend looking? Good morning, pilots. Well, for our final day of remote learning, we managed to get what could have been a snow day. We're currently in the middle of a winter weather advisory. By now, snow should be tapering off, and the final estimates are for three to four inches. If you get a chance, send us your pictures of the snow in your area by sending it to video at cardinalspelman.org, and you might see it in next week's show. What's the rest of the day looking like? The snow will clear out and the temperature will be in the mid-30s. Saturday will be sunny yet cold with a high of only 32. Sunday warms up, but the clouds move in and showers will be in the forecast with a high of 40. Our first day back at Spelman has partly cloudy skies with a high of 32. That's all I got for you now. Be safe and fly high, pilots. Back to you, Michaela and Jamie. Thanks, Izzy. Well, that's it for this week's edition of Morning Flight. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube page so that you are alerted when new episodes premiere on Friday mornings at 8 a.m. Plus, keep up with all sporting and special events here at Spelman. You don't want to miss it. We'll be back next week with a new episode of Morning Flight. Until then, I'm Jamie Madison Reddick. And I'm Michaela Fredericks. Fly high, pilots. Are we, are we going? Are we going? <clears throat> oh my goodness! Are we going? <laughs> Stop! Ready, ready. Shh. I'm sorry. Are you gonna? Okay. I'm trying to give myself the countdown. Jamie Madison Reddick sits down with the new dean of students, Miss Stephanie Irving. And Isabella, oh. I'm sorry. I didn't realize that was my line. <laughs> it's always the best. Okay. Four, three, two, one. Do 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 do. Okay. Five, four, three, two, whatever. You know, you're talking, and the camera's gonna stay on you if you keep. Sorry. I'm sorry.
We have remained in remote since, but that, but. Okay. And remember, the best way to ensure that we are back to. Ooh, I didn't say that. Okay. And remember, the best way to ensure we are. <laughs> Two, one. Recently, I got the, huh? Oh, sorry. Three, two, one. Recently, I got to sit down with Miss Stephanie Irvin, the new dean of students at Spelman. We spoke to her. Whoa. Recently, I got to step. Recently, I got to sit down with Miss Stephanie Irving, the new dean of students at Spelman. We spoke about what it's like. I'm okay. One more time. I got this. Recently, I. <laughs> She wants to start over. <laughs> oh wait, sorry. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. My first question. I'm still adjusting. It's a process. Every day is something new. Are you serious? <laughs> sorry, it's an alarm. It's an alarm. As a dean, I would hope that every graduate would feel just as special about Spelman. That's wrong. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Mr. Drew knows my retakes are ridiculous. Okay. Clarity, three, two, one. <laughs> what do you hope to achieve as Dean? I always make him work for his edit. Okay. Oh, whoa. Is it the weather? Three, two, one. And I, I will always love you. I, I will always love you. Good morning, pilots. Ah, uh, good morning, pilots. All right, good morning, pilots. Well, for our final day of remote learning, we managed to get what could have been a snow